Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's 7 p.m. and time to begin our planning commission for this month. Will all of you please stand while the invocation is led by Commissioner Hatley, followed by the flag salute led by Commissioner Day of uh, Baker. Lord, we turn to you this evening to do what's best and what's only right for you, John. Please pray for our firefighters that just plane. Keep all our armed force members, wherever they may be, in your hearts and your mind. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Chairman Taylor. Here. Commissioner Davis. Here. Commissioner Hatley. Here. Commissioner Baker. Here. Next uh, is the approval of the minutes from uh, February 9th meeting. Should that be the March, March? March. March. Should be the March meeting, correct? Right. Yes. All right. Approval of the minutes from the March meeting. Does anybody have any corrections or additions, or do we have a motion? I make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and second to approve. The discussion. Call the roll, please. Commissioner Baker. Yes. Commissioner Hatley. Yes. Commissioner Davis. Yes. Chairman Taylor. Yes. Next is the visitor section. If there anyone here that would like to address the commissioners about an item that is not on the agenda. Seeing none, we will proceed. Item three is to accept the resignation from board member er Erlene Smeisterla, who was elected to the city council. Mr. Attorney, do we have to vote on this? Or? I think we should go ahead since it's listed as an item. Okay. <clears throat> do I have a motion on this? So moved. Motion to accept. Do we have a second? I'll do a second. Okay, motion and second to accept Commissioner Smostrella's uh, resignation. Call the roll, please. Chairman Taylor? Yes. Commissioner Davis? Yes. Commissioner Hatley? Yes. Commissioner Baker? Yes. Item four is an item to hear a request from Larry Russell Holmes for a reverse lot split for lots five and six, block eight, section three of the Kings Ridge edition, Yukon, Oklahoma. Uh, yes, I'm Larry Russell. And uh, we are just requesting that we put two lots into one because this house is really too large to fit on there and they're also at a future date. We're wanting to add a detached garage also, and uh, it's the only reason we need it. We've done this before yeah. for you. Mm -hmm. yes. Any questions from the commissioners? Is he going to make sure he's got his brick there for that? Excuse me? It's a detached garage. I think it has to match the house, right? Oh, if we do a future, yeah, yeah, yeah but that's it's, that's like a year down the line. But they know that that it has to match. That's in the covenants out there. He said a few years, hoping to get the same brick. Uh, yeah, yeah. All uh, right. <laughs> hopefully, it's all right. Anybody have anything else? This gentleman. Do we have a motion, please? I move in the case of the application for the reverse lot split for five lots five and six block eight of the final plat of Kings Ridge edition section three submitted by Larry Russell Holmes on behalf of Mr. and Mrs. <coughs> DeKinder. Uh, we have read the staff report and received testimony at the public hearing. We find ourselves in agreement with the staff findings including the legal description cited in the staff report. I move that this item be approved. Do we have a second? Second. Motion and a second to approve the reverse lot split. Is there any discussion or any comments from the audience? Call the roll, please. Commissioner Baker? Yes. Commissioner Hatley? Yes. Commissioner Davis? Yes. Chairman Taylor? Yes. Thank you, sir. And thank you. 
Item 5, to hear a request from Tony Tull on behalf of Chicken Express for a curb cut at 12,900 Northwest 10th Street, Yukon, Oklahoma. Yes, sir. Yes, um, that property, I think, as you guys are aware, actually. State your name, sir. Tony Tuthill. Okay, thank you. Uh, falls over in Oklahoma City. We went through our whole permitting process there, pulled driveway permits, done everything we needed to do, got ready to start, and then we found out that with the de-annexation and annexation of Yukon in that line, that that curb cut lands within the jurisdiction of Yukon. So, I mean, the only way that uh, <clears throat> I've worked with staff on, it originally was laid out to go in the center of the property, the driveway. Um, your ordinance calls for 500 feet, which, I mean, it's just impossible for us to meet that in this circumstance. Um, You're immediately east of the dominoes. the dominoes? Yes, sir. On the next lot to the east? Yes. So you'll be adjacent to it? Yes, sir. Okay. So what have you worked out with staff? We worked out moving the driveway to the far east property line and starting the radius off of that property line. Um, and that's pretty much, you know, where we've come to terms the furthest that we can get away from any closest access. You'll just have the one access? The one drive, yes. We only, we only had one ever designed into it, you know, from the beginning. It will not tie into the dominoes? No, sir. No, sir. We actually requested that from Domino's way back when we first started looking at this property a year and a half, two years ago, um, and couldn't get nowhere on, you know, coming to any kind of an agreement or anything with them to do anything. That also exits right into their car wash, you know, where their car right. wash exits, and there's a lot of their utilities already established there. Um, all of our drainage, our engineers had originally set up to drain off back to the south onto the farmer so we're not utilizing any of the city of Yukon storm drain you know any of that um, we generally request a drainage easement for about any piece of property we buy anymore we've kind of found that sometimes can be a problem so it's just kind of standard issue and we try to utilize it whenever you know so you've already got that approved with the landowner to the south oh yes we actually have an actual easement I actually have a copy of that easement in my file okay Yes, we do. In right. fact, it's actually done filed at the courthouse. I mean, it's all done as part of the closing and part of the whole purchase of the property. Mitchell, do you have anything to add to this? Uh, no, uh, other than uh, there is a traffic study that we've had completed or had him complete and submit and update it that supports his application. So we want to make sure that you reference that the traffic study supports his application, if you would. Uh, there is a drawing in here for you if you want to look at that. Uh, we have worked several months on working through this issue. Uh, in the future, I can tell you we'll have different submittals that will come from uh, individuals that are wanting to construct uh, or parcel land off on the south side of 10th Street. So this is kind of an unusual situation that has been remedied in the, the future. So, Okay. Any other commissioners have questions for this gentleman? Anyone care to read the motion then? I'll do it. Uh, in the case of the request by RCE LC LLC to install a new curb cut at 12900 Northwest 10th Street, we have read the staff report and received testimony at the public hearing. We find ourselves in agreement with staff findings, including all plans and attachments cited in the staff report. I move that this item be approved. Uh, Commissioner Baker, it's 12,900, not 12,900. Oh, oh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and uh, Mitchell wanted to reference the, uh, the traffic study to be in here. So can you put that in your motion also? That was just an information item that there was a traffic study, right? That's not a... We just want any curb cuts that are done along there be supported by this documentation. So a traffic study is going to be required for all driveway cuts. So we just wanted you to reference that. Okay. Uh, I move that this item be approved and referenced to the traffic study that's enclosed. Okay. 
Is that uh, satisfactory, Mr. Attorney? That motion? Okay. Yes. I'll second that. Okay. Motion and second. Is there any other discussion? Comments? Call the roll, please. Chairman Taylor? Yes. Commissioner Davis? Yes. Commissioner Catley? Yes. Commissioner Baker? Yes. <clears throat> So when do you plan to start construction? Or? Tomorrow morning. <laughs> I got dirt already down there, so no, I won't realistically get guys there quite that quick, but yeah. probably right around the first of the week. And how long a build is that? Uh, those are four to five months. There's a lot of custom equipment and things like that, and I mean, um, I don't really know if I need to, but I feel like I probably should at least go back to Oklahoma City and let them know we're moving this driveway and I mean, from my understanding, basically the whole driveway is in the jurisdiction of Yukon now. Correct. And see if they might happen to refund me what I done paid them for the permit I got from them, good which might not that. happen. But good you luck know, on that. Good luck. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but right. other than that, I mean, we should be we should be pretty well underway by Monday or Tuesday. So week, maybe uh, maybe towards the end of this calendar year, maybe. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I'm hoping. I'm hoping. You know, late summer. Okay. You know, and try to push it a little better. It kind of depends. I mean, Right now, all that water coming off that farmer comes right to that corner. So just coming by there a while ago, it's still a little swampy around there, so I don't know. We'll have to see how the rain goes this weekend, but right. hopefully Monday. Well, good luck. Thank you, sir. Thank you, gentlemen. You bet. Item 6 is to hear a request from Craft and Tull for consideration of an application for a planned unit development at Frisco Ridge. This is a track of land out here to the west side of town. Uh, it contains 41.416 acres, more or less. And uh, Mr. Attorney, I'm not going to read all of this. Is that satisfactory? That's satisfactory. If there's anybody, you might say if there's anybody who has any questions about where it's located. Is, okay, does anyone have any? questions as to what piece of ground we're talking about okay yes sir go ahead and state your name good evening phil hagan with crafton toll <clears throat> now this uh, consists of phase two plus the undeveloped land between phase two and the creek to the west so that's what this consists of <clears throat> as part of phase one um, similar to issues they had at stone mill uh, there's been several people wanting to build custom homes and because of the cover the coverage requirement they weren't able to build the house they wanted to on the lot so um, we're asking to raise that basically this PUD you can boil it down just asking to raise the coverage from 35 to 45 to allow for larger homes on those tracks we're wanting to do something as nice or nicer than the existing phase of Frisco Ridge as far as the home construction so you say 45 percent 45 percent coverage from right now it's 35 percent Plus, I saw in the the uh, items here that you're also wanting a height uh, <clears throat> relief. Yeah, we put in there height relief. You know, it's the common trend to do you know, higher pitch roofs, and so we just want people to be able to build larger homes. So the wording is basically the same wording we had in Stone Mill. I mean, you get these custom homes with the 12 to 12, 12, 14 pitch. They need that extra height. My question is. Uh, is the drainage issue that con content continually goes on out there is the amount of if you're covering more ground with more house right that should affect the drainage issue in that there's not enough ground to to uh, soak up the water well in our drainage calculations we calculated 75 percent coverage on the lots so we very conservatively calculated what was the coverage would be so our storm sewer detention pond is over designed for 70 percent and we're over detaining like we committed to do mr chairman if you look in the packet we made him provide some calculations and mm -hmm. a little uh explanation as well as the city engineer has uh, reviewed and accepted those so if for your information so if you, if you cover the entire lot on a typical lot from setback to setback you get about you could put about 51 percent of the lot if you covered every square foot and we were calculating 70% of the lot is being covered so we've overcompensated for that questions from the commissioners well 
I know uh, it's a real it's a real concern with the people to the north there. Still, it still has been for this whole the whole deal of developing that piece of ground out there. Right. Okay. Does anybody have any other questions for him? <coughs> yeah. This will be phase two and what's marked as track one. Yeah. Uh, phase two and the undeveloped land to the creek. Yes. And as we committed with this with phase two first thing we did is went in there and built a detention pond and the outlet structure and i believe we followed through with everything we said we we're going to do related to drainage so do you own the ground on the other side of the creek or the same party owns the ground on the other side of the creek yeah but just with what's that's going not on be over covered there under this PUD. No. with what's going on across the street to the west they're not quite sure what how they want to develop west of the creek right now that's where the sports park's going to be. Potentially, yes. Anything else? Commissioner Baker? No. Davis? And we've okay. read the staff's comments and we agree with, with making those corrections. Okay, is there someone else that'd like to speak to this item before we call for a vote? Anybody else? Can I do it as a visitor? Or yes, sir. <laughs> I'm here because I have uh, got a vested interest in this chat. Can you uh, uh, say my your name? My name is Max DeWeese. I live at 703 Kingsgate Road okay. in the Reginald Westport edition. You know, I, I had, uh, when I moved in, I had a lot of involuntary remediation for stormwater runoff. You know, I spent several thousand dollars uh, being able to accommodate, accommodate the stormwater drainage in our development that wasn't taken care of with original plans. So every time you see a see a change like this, and I, I'm not questioning really, and I'm not adversarial, but I'm kind of making a statement that is, you know, that the stormwater drainage is vitally important in this area. Uh, it, if you go out there after a hard rain like we had, the streets are full already. And so anything that has to be done in the future must make sure that there's allowances made that there's no increase of drainage down towards the towards east there on Kingsgate Road. So what we're trying to do tonight by questioning this gentleman and having the studies that they've done and our even our city engineer has reviewed it and signed off on it. And we all we can do up here, none of us up here are engineers and surveyors, but this gentleman stands up and says they've got it handled staff believes they do you know I actually have confidence they do but I also want to be making a statement here tonight you know I, I say I'm not adversarial but I don't want to end up district court later because I have my house get flooded all the time you understand what I'm saying yes sir so thank you for hearing this and, and consider this as that property is developed west of uh, Westport there it's going to be a consideration. Yes, sir. Know, it is. So keep that in mind if you would. I appreciate it. I have a question. Did you observe the retention pond there in front of Ridge in this last rain? Did you know, it, I didn't. I, did it you fill know. up? Has anybody seen it? Did it fill up? I want to. Justin Christie, 309 Swingman Court. Uh, I believe I'm the, I may be the closest resident to the pond. I, well, I guess not that, but one of the four or five. Um, I watched it during its, I would say, its heaviest uh, acquisition of water or, or catch of water in it. There's currently a drain tube about halfway to the top of it, and it, it may be got above the drain tube, which would leave, I would approximate, six more feet before it completely filled so it looked like it, it retained a lot of water but it collected a lot of water too so i don't know if that helps but yeah. that's what i saw thank you sir thank you my name is everett robbins uh 513 branch line road uh, okay. we have the retention pond to the uh, east uh, which runs parallel to westport um, and it filled uh, about halfway and it drained out fairly well also so the drainage has been uh, adequately addressed in our neighborhood at this point. Thank you, sir. Anyone else have 
any comments or anything? Yes, sir. I'm Rick Opitz, uh, 1777 West Vandermont, Yukon, Oklahoma. I'm one of the developers on the parcel. <clears throat> Just to bring to your attention, uh, also the city of Yukon did a very, very extensive flood study prior to that development being developed. And then our engineers have also done a lot of study work to be sure that it's right. I love Yukon, and I want it to be the best. I think it's a great city, and I want to make it better. I actually think we're doing that, and I actually think that by building those size of homes, we're going to draw people that have significant income that would be living here in Yukon, spending their money here in Yukon, and also providing tax dollars for our city to do what they need to do. And I really believe we're doing it right. If I didn't, I wouldn't be here tonight. I wouldn't be doing it. <clears throat> so I really believe that we're doing it right. And uh, now I'll stand ready for any questions that you have for me, the developer. Uh, Rick, and on the track, track one, it, it's hard to tell from the drawing. Are the lots in track one, they appear to be larger than the phase one lots, are they? Yes, they are. Okay. They will be larger lots that will be backed up to the trees, the green belt. Mm -hmm. They will be larger lots, and of course, larger lots, they'll be larger homes. But we'll still be in the 45%? Yes. On that. And the tube that drains out of the retention pond, does that go into the creek between uh, Frisco and Westport 66? Go ahead. I, I didn't catch your question. Yeah, that, that's correct. Okay. It, it goes into that tree channel and it meets up with a branch that comes from Westport and goes under 66. Okay. Okay. Further questions? Comments? My name's D.R. Satter, I live at 405 Swingman Road, and I was just wondering what structures can be built in a PUD? Well, a PUD is just an overlay of the zoning that's already in there, of R1 zoning, uh -huh. and it, it like it's allowing for our, our ordinance calls for a 35 percent <laughs> lot coverage. Well, having a PUD on just this section of ground allows for he wants a 45 lot coverage and a little more height on the houses than our ordinances allow. So the PUD, is that correct, Mitchell, in what I'm saying? The PUD allows just that group of homes to go outside our ordinances Still by allowing that overlay of the R1 zoning. Still be just single family housing? Yes, sir. Yes. That's all I need to know. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, also a point of interest, uh, they have to stay within the existing setbacks as what was originally done in the first section, so they'll have the same setbacks. All right. Anybody else? Would someone care to read the uh, motion? I'll read it. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. In the case of the application of rezoning submitted by Crapton Toll, on behalf of ODB Investments. We have read the staff report and received testimony at the public hearing. We find ourselves in agreement with staff findings, including all plans and attachments cited in the staff report. I move this item be recommended for approval to City Council with the following conditions. One, all revisions listed in Section 5 of this report be incorporated into the PUD document and Master Development Plan. Ms. do I need to read all of this in section five? Do I need to read all of these in section five? Do you, no. Oh. No, right. no. Do we have a second to that uh, motion? I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, 
Anybody else? Any any further comments before we vote? This does go have to go before the city council uh, for their approval or disapproval. Call the roll, please. Chair Chairman Taylor. Yes. Commissioner Davis. Yes. Commissioner Hatley. Yes. Commissioner Baker. Yes. Thank you. Uh, which meeting? Which one will we be on? Don't know yet. We'll just have to see, and we'll let you know what agenda would be posted on. Okay. We appreciate it. Uh, next item is open discussion. Does anyone have anything on their mind they want to talk about? Does staff have anything? Cindy? Attorney? Then our next scheduled meeting, uh, and there will should be something fairly interesting at that meeting also, will be June the 8th, 2015. This meeting's adjourned. <laughs>